for number two, we want to find the volume um, of the solid when we get the region between the curves and we revolve it um, about the x-axis. So let's begin by drawing this curve over here, um, y is equal to 1 minus x squared. So um, we have our plane, and then this is a parabola that opens downwards, um, but has been shifted upwards by 1. So it's a parabola whose vertex is, uh, sorry, it's a parabola whose vertex is at 1. And then it has the roots positive 1 and negative 1. So positive 1 and negative 1, right? Um, and it goes like this. So this is our curve y is equal to 1 minus x squared. And then uh, it, the other boundary is the y, the line y equals 0. So it's just this line over here, which is y is equal to 0. Um, so the area between them is this area over here. And it does go from negative 1, which are the roots of the parabola, to positive 1. Um, so, or if you wanted to, you could have just said these equations equal to each other, right? So 1 minus x squared is equal to 0, and that's how you would find the roots. Um, so once we have this, we have to think about how our disk is going to look like once we revolve it around the x-axis. So um, when we revolve it... We are going to sum up. Uh, we're going to sum up all these different disks, which have an area. So when we sum up the areas, we're going to have a three D three D figure that has volume. Um, so let's let's try to to draw this disk. This disk would be something like like this. Yeah. Kind of something like this, yeah. And we can see that the 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 area for a disk, assuming that it does have area, right? So it's kind of like shaded in. So the area for a disk is equal to pi r squared. But now we can see that the radius, like the height of this disk, it changes, right? It changes depending on where we are. So it is a function of x. It does depend on whether where we are in our x-axis to give us a certain height. So, and we can see that the height is described by this curve over here. So actually the area is equal to um, pi times 1 minus x squared squared, right? Or area is equal to pi times, we'll just expand this, so this is x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 1. So that's our area. Um, and now to integrate this, we are just summing up. Uh, when we integrate it, we're summing up all these areas, right, to make a volume. Um, so summing up, let's see. And because this is symmetric, we know that a parabola has symmetry about the origin. Um, instead of going from negative 1 to 1, we'll just put twice from 0 to 1, right? Because then it gives us the same volume instead of going from negative 1 all the way to 1 because that way the boundaries are easier to integrate. So uh, we're just summing up the area, right? So we're going twice from 0 to 1 of area as a function of x dx. So this is equal to 0 to 1, and I'll just put the pi outside because it's a constant, 2 pi times x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 1 um, dx. And this gives us, let me erase this, this gives us, let's see, x to the uh, 2, this gives us 2 pi times, 2 pi times x to the power of 5th over 5 um, minus 2x cubed over 3 plus x um, evaluated from 0 to 1. So all we need to do is plug evaluated at our upper boundary because our lower boundary is go just going to make everything go to 0. So this is 2 pi times 1 to the power of 5 is 1. So 1 fifth minus 2 times 1, so 2 thirds. 
and then plus one. So when we put this in our calculator, let's see, this is one fifth minus two thirds plus one and then times two pi. So what we have here is 16 pi over 15. Yeah, and that does give us um, this volume. So I hope that you guys were able to see that when we're taking the volume, all we're doing is summing up these cross sections uh, from negative one to one. And the cross section is that of a circle since we revolved it. Um, that has an area whose radius varies according to the curve y is equal to 1 minus x squared.